you were talking about the nightclubs, Miami. If you want oh to bring God, that up on what's going on with Miami, yeah, the, the story the, there. The, well, we both live in Miami, so this is a story that's near and dear in my heart. But obviously, FTX sponsored the Miami Heat Arena, formerly known as American Airlines. Love it. But you know, there's a story out there in the Financial Times that here it is. Miami nightclubs mourn the absence of high-rolling crypto entrepreneurs. So they started interviewing... Um, People I know, friends of mine who run Groot Hospitality, Dave Grutman's um, nightlife place, and then also the everyone over at Eleven, right? And I think the Gino Lapinto, is, who runs Eleven, he says last year six million dollars was spent in crypto. This year it's down to ten k. So the ripple effects is what you're asking wait, about. Wait, wait, wait. You yeah. got to say that slower. Yes. Eleven started accepting payments in crypto in April of 2021. The club processed more than six million dollars of transaction in 2021 but in the past three months the club has only processed less than ten thousand right holy moly so, michael uh, you got to go a back lot of money was again. making You're not rain clubbing enough <laughs> lately two two thoughts right first of all he bought everybody and how did okay and and let me just make a stark observation he counterfeited 10 billion dollars in one year if you could counterfeit, if you know, if <laughs> no. you created ten, it's look. You have a three hundred million to FTT tokens. Move the price thirty bucks. Do the math, right? It, thirty dollars on a token when you give yourself three hundred million of them is ten billion, and that's just one token. So, if you fall off the turnip truck and you find that you can generate ten billion dollars in a year, what do you do? You go buy everybody. You buy every influencer, you buy every politician, you buy every celebrity, you buy the stadium, you buy all of Albany, you buy the government, you buy the everything that's for sale, right? There, it's hard to find a crypto influencer that didn't take FTX money. But he hired everybody. Go as fast as you can. Well, how much can you spend? A billion in a year? Two billion a year? They thought they had found the fountain of money, right? There is nothing more lucrative than a license to print money. This is why the Bitcoin maximalists just get so angry, right? They declare war on the shit coiners and shit coinery. The idea that you can just create your own token, sell it to the general public and manipulate the price of it and dump it on. But, but here's where the, the poor Bitcoiners never figured out. Their view is they're creating a shit coin and dumping it on retail. But again, Sam's twist on it was, no, I'm not going to dump it on retail. I'm driving it to the sky. I'm never going to sell it. I'm going to use it to buy other banks. And then I'm going to drain the assets out of the bank by giving myself an under-the-table loan. It's so much more diabolical than just dumping a, a shit coin on unsuspecting retail traders. So, yeah, he did it. He, uh, you know, And he invited that scrutiny and... And uh, it was inevitable. He reminds me of one other person, by the way. If you if you want to know the antecedent, ten years before Sam Bankman-Fried came along, yeah, who's that? Jolo. 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 Uh, if you talk to these same club guys and Not say, "Jolo who, fit," this is different. Who was Jolo? The, yeah. Jolo. Not J Lo. Jolo. How do you spell that? Yeah, a billion dollar whale. I I guess was uh, like Jolo. Said, oh. Check out 1MDB scandal. 1MDB JOLO. How do you spell JOLO, Michael? J-O-L-O. -O. Just like JOLO. Okay. So here's what... Malaysia? Yeah. Oh. This is what happened. 27-year-old guy comes, all of a sudden, hooks up in a relationship with the prime minister of Malaysia, convinces the prime minister that they should set up a sovereign wealth fund and they're going to raise money and invest it for the good of the Malaysian people. Hmm. Was the Malaysian uh, president a male or female? Male. So they're gay lovers? No. no it was Najib. Uh, he w It's all... Res Najib Rajak was the prime minister and Najib okay. was in cahoots with Jolo. Uh, and uh, Jolo ended up raising $14 billion dollars. And the way he raised it was he, he sold fraudulent bonds. They took the money. And, of course, none of the money found its way to the Malaysian people. Jolo just took it, stole it, and spent it. Uh, $1.700 million was wired into the prime minister's personal account. $50 million worth of diamonds and shoes got bought by the prime minister for, for his wife on a weekend. Hmm. The Wolf of Wall Street, the entire movie— was financed by Jolo, 
the the get uh, out of it. The there he is with Leonardo DiCaprio right there. There he is at the Wolf of Wall Street premiere. Yeah. It looks like it's very famous. The great get uh, out of here. Okay, that entire movie cost more than a hundred million bucks. It was paid for with money stolen from the Malaysian people. Jolo wanted to be a movie star. Jolo Jolo dated starlets. He uh, he bought hundred, multi hundred million dollar yachts. He would spend $5 million a night in clubs. He would come down here to the Miami night clubs. And Damn, night I wish clubs. I ran into him. Yeah, and... Uh, Jolo, J-H-O-L-O-W, two yeah. words, Jolo. And, and here's the point. The guy would, he would walk into a nightclub and he would spend uh, $4 million. He would buy $102,000 bottles of champagne like that, spray it everywhere, buy a hundred dollar, hundred more of them, and people said, "How can this guy spend a million a night or two million a night or, or the like?" And the answer is, he stole the money. Yeah, like, he stole billions and billions of dollars, and he spent it like he stole it. If mm. you made twenty billion dollars, you wouldn't spend money like that. Right. In any event, he's a fugitive internationally. But he, but before um, Sam came along and the entire crypto thing blew up. It was this massive sovereign wealth scandal, and uh, and there are lots of colorful stories. Yeah, you bring up good such a good point it. with this wasteful spending, because anybody that legitimately makes money knows how hard it is to make money. Kevin O'Leary talks about if I forget to claim my air miles, like I'll go back and call the airlines because I know what it takes to get the amount of money to do this. But these people that fraudulently just come up with money, they'll gladly make it rain millions of dollars because it's. It's fake. Came too, it just came too fast. Yeah. Too fast. So with all the craziness taking place, I believe future looks bright. If you believe future looks bright, get your latest future looks bright hat of value Tamen. It says future looks bright here. Future looks bright here. We got them in white. We got them in black. We got them in red. Our black on black sold out. These are about to sell out. If you haven't ordered one yet, we had a person in Michigan bought one. Then he bought three. Then when those three people were in the office, they had to order 58 of them because people wanted the Future Looks Bright hat, especially during times like this because ain't nobody saying Future Looks Bright. To order your Future Looks Bright hat, click over here. And to watch the entire podcast, click here. Take care, everybody.